Let's have a word of prayer before we begin. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for everyone that's here, Lord. We ask that you bless this service, Lord. Lord, we ask that you bless the, 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 the regular service today, Lord, and watch over those who are traveling to be here today, Lord, and get them here safely, Lord. Lord, those that cannot be with us today for any reason, Lord, please just watch over them and bless them. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're looking in the book of Mark again today. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebub. They're talking about Jesus when he's casting out the demons. By the prince of demons, he is, divided, he is dividing out demons. So what they're saying is, is Jesus is pushing demons out with demons. So Jesus calls them over to him and began to speak to them in parables. What Jesus told them was, How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. So what Jesus is saying, that, that we've all heard the statement, a house divided will fall. A house divided cannot stand. Uh, it's, it's that way with everything. Uh, a church that is divided amongst its beliefs, its works, its uh, uh, everything that it does. If a church is divided, that church is not going to stand very long. If you've got half the church that believes what's in the Bible and knows that the preacher is, is preaching the word of God, and you've got the other half of the church that says, no, he's wrong, that's not right, God didn't say that, or Jesus didn't say that, then that church is not going to last. It's, it's done for. Uh, and we see it every day if you watch the news. Our government is so divided right now. Just look at the state we're in. Um, and these, these people are accusing Jesus of doing this to, to stop him from doing the right thing. They don't, they don't like the fact that he's doing the right thing. So they're accusing him of being possessed by the devil to drive out devils. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Truly, I'll tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. But whosoever blaspheme against the Holy Ghost will never be forgiven and is guilty of an eternal sin. <coughs> Excuse me. What are you saying there is that he knows what they're saying, and that's, that's blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Uh, if you curse God or you curse Christ, you can be forgiven because you have the Holy Spirit. But if you go against the Holy Spirit, you have nowhere to go then. You, if, you, if, you, uh, if you accuse Jesus of being the devil or God of not being true or... or his word not being true, then you have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. So you're, that's it. You're, you're finished then. Um, and what Jesus was saying about the strong man's house, what Jesus was doing by coming down and casting out devils and forgiving people of their sin was binding the devil. The devil had power over this earth before Jesus arrived, and Jesus was here to change that. He was here to give us a choice. Uh, before that... There really wasn't much of a choice. You live by the law, and that's it. If you, if you did not live by the law, you were going straight to hell. But now we have a choice, and it's, it's free will. You have the will to make that decision. If you don't make that decision, it's nobody else's fault but yours. He said this because they were, they were saying he was an impure spirit. So they were accusing Jesus of being an impure spirit, or being impure and being possessed by the devil. So that was blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Well, 
let's see. To blaspheme God, the Father, I'll go over this again. To blaspheme God, the Father, or, the, or Christ the Son, will be forgiven. When one commits blaspheme against the Father or the Son, he has the Holy Spirit to draw him to repent, making forgiveness possible. When one commits blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, there was no one, there can be no, no forgiveness simply because there is no one other than the Holy Spirit to draw one to repent. So the Holy Spirit, once you're saved and you receive the Holy Ghost, you have that inside you to draw you to repent for your sins. But if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit leaves your body, there's nothing that you can do. You have nothing to draw on. Then Jesus' mother and brother arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was gathering around him, and they told him, Your mother and brother are outside looking for you. Jesus said, Who are my mother and my brothers? He asked. Then he looked at those seated in the circle around him and said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whosoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. So what Christ is saying that, that yes, everybody, we all have an earthly mother. And you love her. You, you, she, she, she gave you life. She fed and clothed you for 18, 20 some years. So, yes, but when you accept Christ into your life, you have a whole new family. So, uh, there's a sister there, there's a sister there, a sister there, and a sister there. There's a brother there, and there's a brother in the back somewhere. That's my family. That's the family that I will have for, the, for eternity, for an eternity. And it's a huge family. Everyone who has accepted Christ in their life is in that family. So you'll have them forever. Um, whosoever does the will of God, a true follower, a safe person, are a spiritual family. Uh, and th they hold fast to the foundation principles. And here are a few of the, the founding principles for the uh, Christian faith. A united church, as I was saying. The whole church has got to be united. You got to, they got to have one belief and one goal. Uh, at all times, the church is at war against Satan. Satan is battling us. He wants us to fall. He wants this church to divide. And we can see that in things that we do and what Satan tries to do to stop it. We've seen the whole church get sick a couple years ago. Uh, we've seen uh, Satan try to take Nick out of this church permanently. But we fought against the devil and we won because we had Christ on our side. Believe, worship, and obey the Trinity is another thing that keeps a church united. And this church believes in the Trinity, they worship God, and we obey his laws. All members of this church are children of God. All members have to be children of God for this church to stand. So, like I said, we've all, we've all heard that uh, a house divided will fall. So it, it, you've, got to, you've got to stay together with everything that you believe in. All right? Thank you.